Joining me now is a UFC lightweight fighter who defeated Richie Smoulin in his debut via first round submission at the Ultimate Fighter 27 finale this past Friday in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is Violent Bob Ross himself, Luis Pena, here in the program for the very first time. Luis, how are you? I'm doing great, Nick. Once again, uh, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, you know, congratulations once again on this big victory. Uh, has it all sunk in? I mean, you on the biggest stage in Las Vegas at the Palms Ultimate Fighter finale. You, of course, uh, you know, had to drop out of the show, so that was crushing for you at the time. But to go in there and 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 uh, make your debut nonetheless and get the win, has any of this sunk in yet, or are you still on cloud nine? Uh, I finally came down a little bit. And it's all starting to finally sink in. Um, been one of those like weird things to deal with all the fame and like uh blowing up a little bit but at the same time like trying to embrace it all yeah it, it it's interesting we'll talk all about that and much more but before that let's talk about the actual fight were you happy with how it went and were there any surprises or did you it, did it basically play out as expected um yeah i, I would say i was happy with my performance i mean you can't get any better than finishing the guy and then getting the performance bonus. Um, the one thing I will say is I was actually uh, a little thrown off by how strong Richie was. I, I didn't expect him to be so strong in the clinch, and then he hit a lot harder than I thought, too. You mentioned that you got the that you got the performance bonus, so that's an extra 50K. How... how uh... I guess life changing is that money for you. I uh, I know you haven't had any time really to spend it, but uh like how you know, sometimes we see these guys, especially their first fight in the UFC, if they get one of these bonuses, it's it's really important. It's it's huge for them. Is that is that the same case for you? Without a doubt, no, like this has completely changed my life. I went from um literally making ten times less than that in a year for six fights to making, you know, Seventy thousand dollars for one fight. Like I, I can't explain how life changing this has been for me. In the fight, how uh, big of an advantage was the size uh, difference for you? You obviously had a big reach advantage. You were a lot taller. How much did that play into this fight? Um, I mean, personally, from my perspective, I never really know because, like, I just go out there and I do it. Um, I feel like it's a better. Uh, it's a bit better question for Richie personally. Like when I when I'm fighting, like I never really think about the size of the or anything. Um, I don't know. I felt as though I had uh, an insane reach on him, just because like I never felt in danger of being touched on the feet. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I tend to agree. It looked like, uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, Smulin naturally usually fights featherweight, so the, the size was definitely clear there. Um, considering the injury on Tough, having to be, you know, be being forced off the show, that was obviously very, uh, very sad for you. It was, it was crushing for you. Uh, what were your emotions after this one? Just because, again, at the time on the show, it, it, it sucked, but then now it. It's almost like in hindsight that never actually mattered because you're here, you got in the UFC, you got the win, you're here to stay anyways. So was it a lot of relief, I would imagine? Oh, without a doubt. Like I was, you know, it felt like I had uh, a ton of weight, you know, off my chest. But at the same time, um, you know, it wasn't the, the fight everyone was talking about, you know. As much as people were talking about me fighting and they were talking about all that, everyone still wanted to see who was going to win the show. And it still kind of hurt knowing that I wasn't getting my shot what I thought should have been one of my spots. Hmm. So despite getting the win, you still feel like the name value of yourself would have been a lot higher had you been crowned ultimate fighter as you think you could have been had it not been for the injury? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, that's the, the whole point of the show. You were, of course, coached by Daniel Cormier, the new champ champ on the show. What did you make of his win over Stipe? It's, uh, it was absolutely amazing. Um, getting to spend so much time with him, you know, you start to forget that DC is such, like, an amazing human being in his own right. And you start to forget that he's who he is. And then watching him do that, watching him voice up, both belts, uh, 
it kind of reminds me, you know, that DC is this great person. Not only is he like a great person, like he's this great like figure. He is this the one of the greatest of all times. You know, I'm getting a chance to pick his brain almost every day. Do you enjoy being on Tough? Uh, you know, I've talked to, I mean, just, uh, there's a lot of fighters that after the show, it's sort of mixed reviews. Some enjoy their time, some don't really at all, some hate it, some are sort of in the middle. Where do you fall? Did you enjoy it overall? Was it a, a good experience, or would have would it have been bad maybe just to go on the Contender Series or something? I enjoyed it. I uh, I personally, like, I, I like the whole experience. I like being away from uh, civilization. I like Seeing all that, I like being able to see what I could do in that situation, like what I could do without all the distractions, without my girlfriend, without my TV, video games, uh, cell phone, all that, you know. And then I also, um, I also like like afterwards, as opposed to like the Contender series, um, like when you're going through the whole tough experience, you get 12 weeks to kind of deal with the publicity and deal with the media. And everyone wanted to talk to you, whereas on the Contender Series, it's really just one night. And so I guess you feel like it, being on Tough, it gave you just more time to get ready for what was to come? or Exactly. Exactly. I feel like it gives you just more, like a little bit more time to get ready for all of it. What were your expectations sort of on the mark for Tough? Did you did what hap you know what happened? Is that sort of what you were thinking would happen going in, or did you not really have any expectations going in? I mean, I was one of those guys that I really didn't have too many expectations for what uh, the show was going to be. Um, I watched uh, like most people, I've watched seasons of Tough before, but. Uh, and I can say from experience now, the uh, the show is not like the exact you know day to day experience we have what at all whatsoever sometimes. Um, but at the same time, uh, like I like I said, I enjoyed it all. It seems like you've been very, very busy ever since beating uh, Richie Smullen last uh, Friday. Not even a week ago, I know you did a Reddit AMA earlier today. You've done tons of interviews. You went on Ariel Helwani's new show for ESPN. You've done so many uh, interviews and different media. And, and has any of this, or has all of it, I should say, been overwhelming to you? Um, I mean, it's been a little overwhelming. The most overwhelming bit of it for me is, like, the fans. Uh, have people come up to me that I don't know that are, that like want pictures and like want my autograph and stuff like is that crazy insane. to you? That's yeah. that's crazy. Like I I never would imagine I'd be here, especially at twenty five. Why do you think it is that? It it seems like everybody and their dog and their mom and their you know uncle is talking about you. It's the hair. I mean, let's let's be honest. It's the hair. <laughs> Okay, so let, let's talk about the history of this hair, because I'm sure you've explained this story many, many times, and you're probably tired of talking about it, but I haven't heard it. For how long have you, I guess, looked the way you look? Not to make it sound rude or anything, because it's great. But... Oh, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say, because like, I would probably say probably about like maybe a little over a year and a half, uh, to about a year and three months. Like, that's about how long I've looked like this but i stopped growing my hair out two years ago or i stopped i stopped cutting my hair two years ago why did you stop cutting your hair why did you well before you thought fans would attract to it and you'd become a popular fighter because of it why did you want to look or, or you know rock this look so to speak I just decided one day I was like, I'm gonna stop getting my hair cut, see what it feels, see what that looks like, see what it feels like. And uh, about like six months in, I was like, man, I'm, I'm really liking this hair thing, and so I just stuck with it. I guess at the beginning, sort of on that decision, was it just sort of a matter of you didn't feel like getting your hair cut? It was just one of those things you didn't have to do anymore. I wasn't even like, oh, I don't want to get my hair cut anymore. So much as like, I just wanted to see what I would look like with long, with like really, really long hair. But and, and then when you first decided to grow the hair out, you had no idea that it would cause your popularity to grow, say, two years from then. I honestly had 
absolutely no idea. I never really thought it was going to turn into this thing where, like, I'm the that guy, you know, I'm Bob Ross. But I, I'll take it. I'll I'll run with it all day. Where are you right now? Are you back home? Are you still in Vegas? Did you go down to California? Where are you right now? I'm in California actually right now. Okay. How many times, because you mentioned, because I, I was actually there at the fight, I, I we, we did the whole media scrum after the fight, and I know they talked, or, or someone asked you about just being stopped ahead of the fight by fans and all that. How many autographs and pictures have you taken since the fight has happened? Oh, man. I uh, So they had a stand at Park MGM, which is right across the street from Team Mobile. And uh, I'm going out to get lunch as... People are, like, filing in to T-Mobile. And me, like, having just won the fight, like, I completely forgot about the fight uh, Saturday. Is this on the Saturday? This is yeah, the day this of is on Saturday. So, like, I wasn't even thinking about the time frame of me trying to go and do anything. I lit- it literally took me an hour to get from Park MGM, like, a block down the street to Las Vegas Boulevard. From all the people wow. asking for questions or asking for pictures, autographs, and all that kind of stuff, like it was absolutely ridiculous. I was sitting there, like it wasn't even like I was annoyed. I was I just kept getting amazed at the sheer number of people that knew who I was. And I guess not everybody knows that your nickname is Violent Bob Ross, but do you get that comparison from people that might not know about the nickname? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you get people saying, hey, you, ju- you just look like Bob Ross? Do you, you know, do people All say that? The time. All, All the, the time. All the time. I get, I get uh, Bob Ross. I get uh, Ari Shafir. Um, Shady Grady from Stanford and Son. That's one of my favorites. So is it just the hair as far as why people have been talking about you more than, more than say, Mike Trezano or more than Joe Gennetti, more than pretty much anybody on this card except for maybe Israel Adesanya, uh, which, I mean, and I, I know you're a big fan of Adesanya, so, you know, it's no shame in being talked about less than him or whatever, but, you know, is it just the hair or is there something else? I mean, you have a pretty unique personality, too. That has to help, right? I mean, yeah, I would say it's the hair, the, the personality, my fighting style, um... You know, you watch me fight. I, I go out there. I'm not trying to just win the like win rounds, win decisions. Like I'm trying to finish people any way in uh, any way possible, like through the time. And you can see that out there. You can see like I'm not just going out there and trying to win these uh, these exchanges. I'm going out there and trying to finish them. You know. And I guess we've sort of already covered this in a in a little like a little bit, but as far as the hair, as far as your personality, your fighting style, it sort of all as as we just said comes together and makes you this guy that a lot of people you know want to talk to and want to meet and you know who are becoming a lot more familiar with. How how beneficial is all of this? Just because this is a sport where not everybody makes you know Conor McGregor money, where you really have to fight and you really have to uh, stand out. You, you market yourself well, and uh, having the fans remember who you are. Is, is really key to, to to going far in this sport, and you do it, you or you did it almost by accident. I mean, I think it's a big uh, a big deal or a big factor, just because it's just, it's like you said, especially at 155 and 145, there's so many guys, and you got to find something that makes yourself stand out. And if it's for me, if it's my hair, my personality. And uh, the way I look, this whole nickname I've got going on, and so be it. I mean, I, I hate to brag or sound cocky or anything, but like, like if you, if you said it yourself, um, they're talking about me more than they're talking about Mike, or they're talking about Brad, they're talking about either of the winners. When it comes to that, I made mo- I made more money than both the winners combined. So, yeah, I mean. Who's to say winning the show was the most important thing and it wasn't about, you know, making the most of uh, a uh, situation. Have you talked with anybody from the UFC since the win? And have you been sort of told that, hey, we're going to really look to push you, you know, we want to push you and, and, and try and take you far? Have you talked to anybody from the UFC about about your win and just sort of your, your future? I, I mean, I haven't talked to anyone personally. My manager has, um, and I think they – I mean – I think they want to get behind me. I want to get behind yeah. the UFC. Um, it seems like they they're in need of uh, 
of a star of someone that can you know get the people going. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm ready to do whatever they want. Really, I'm uh, I'm I'm just ready to get my UFC career started and get you know a path to an eventual title shot started. Yeah. How do you prepare for this newfound fame, or do you think you already have? Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I never really planned on doing anything like prepare for it or like like anything like that. So much as like I just I, I'm gonna do I'm gonna take it like I take everything else in life the way I take fighting. I'm just go with the flow. Let everything come to me as it will. You said in your recent Reddit uh, Ask Me Anything that uh, the fighter you admire the most is Israel Adesanya, who happened to headline the Tough 27 finale last Friday. Why do you admire him as much as you do, and uh, what did you make of his win over Brad Tavares? Um, first, Israel Adesanya is a bad dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, he goes out there, and it's not even like uh, he's trying to make these guys look bad. He just makes them look it makes everyone look terrible. Um, not, not only that, not only is he a great fighter, but he's also like a great dude. Like I got the chance to talk to him a lot uh, at weigh-ins. And then um, we kind of connected because we're both real big anime fans. And then not only that, but like he uh, uh, DM'd me on Instagram. I talked to him there and everything. And um, it was pretty cool like getting to talk to him, having that conversation with him. And like being one of the two dudes in the room that were like really cool with each other. I mean, the both of us got the performance bonus. Like that was pretty dope. Um, honestly, I think uh, I think it shows that Israel is ready for uh, a step up in competition. I definitely think he needs to see um, he needs to be in those uh, fights. I don't necessarily know if he's ready to fight for the belt yet, but I definitely think he needs to be in those fights that are, uh, that matter. You know what I mean? No, for sure. Um, let, let's talk one last thing about uh, you and your career. Where do you think you sit in the lightweight division now? Of course, you're only 1-0. You only have had uh, what, what, your your five. This was your fifth pro fight, so you're still young in your career and everything. There's no rush, but uh, where do you feel like you sit, and, and what is next for you? I mean, that's a good question. Um, everyone always wants to know, you know who I think I should fight next. And um, outside of... In my opinion, I think the, the fight to make for myself is uh, Mike Pizano. I think he and I match up really well. It'd be a really interesting fight and a really exciting fight. Um, but when it comes to like guys outside the show, I don't really know too many guys that uh, that I think the UFC would put me like match me up against that are already on the roster. And uh, all the guys that I can think of, I, I don't want to put myself on that big of a rush. Um, I would like to say, like, here in a matter of two or three years, though, I would like to put together enough wins to be looking, you know, looking at title shots, have a, you know, in a fight for the belt. Well, Luis, it's uh, been great talking to you over the past 20 minutes or so. Congratulations once again on the big win last Friday and uh, very looking, uh, very much looking forward to your next one. Before I let you go, remind my audience, uh, if they're not already following you, where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. Once again, Nate, I want to thank you for having me on. Um, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, both. Uh, at Violent Bob Ross. I uh, want to give a huge shout out to my team, St. Charles MMA, and Arnold BJJ back home in St. Louis, and of course, American Kickboxing Academy here in uh, California. And then a, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to all my sponsors Foy CBD, Fuji BJJ, AVLS Relations LLC, Iron Jaw Custom Mouth Guards, Armor Nutshells, Arch Street Wheel and Tire. Uh, and Moria and Maria clothing and then uh, just once again I want to give a huge thanks to all the fans that have got behind me and all the positive messages like that's been really cool and I really really appreciate it thanks